What's going on guys, Briar Rabbit here. Today we're gonna to be talking about the new supers that were unveiled for the Forsaken DLC in the latest Game Informer article. This thing had a ton of information about the Forsaken DLC in it, the Game Informer article did, and uh, some of it was pretty spoiler heavy. So I'll be talking about some of this stuff. I won't be talking about other stuff. The stuff that is real story heavy, I'll probably just leave on the table. If you wanna know about that, there's definitely places to find out about it. But for me, I'll be talking about gameplay elements. I won't be talking about exotics. I will be talking about sandbox stuff, that kind of that kind of thing. So let's start off with the supers because they are very cool. And what strikes me is that they are so different than any other super we've ever had, right? These supers represent something new in Destiny 2, whereas the Destiny 2 supers felt very much like an evolution of Destiny 1 supers, sometimes even a nerfing of Destiny 1 supers. These things sound powerful, destructive, sometimes supportive, very cool stuff. So let's start off with the Titans. Titanal, Sentinel, Sentinel Code of the Commander. Melees cause explosions, but all void ability damage also attaches a void detonator, and any subsequent damage causes the detonator to go off and attach detonators to enemies caught in the explosion. So you're going to attach a detonator to somebody, then they blow up and attach a bunch more detonators, and then they blow up and they attach a bunch more detonators. And theoretically, this just keeps going. I don't know if it's going to have a limit or if it's just after the second set of detonators. We'll have to see. It also depends how good this thing is. Basically, depends on how strong those detonators are, but it certainly sounds like fun. Uh, grenade energy partially recharges for you and nearby allies when detonators, detonators trigger. Banner shield can still be used for offense like normal, but holding guard creates a barrier wall of light that absorbs enemy attacks, but allows ally attacks to pass through. So basically you can use the banner shield to shoot through your, your allies can be behind you shooting through at the bad guys, but the bad guys can't shoot through to you. Very cool. Very cool defensive ability. The Titan Sunbreakers code of the De devastator. Throw your hammer with the melee button, but it remains in the world. Risk retrieving it where it fell to fully recharge your melee ability and trigger health regen. This is cool. It's like a throwing knife for, for Titans, except it's a hammer. And you can go pick it up and get your hammer back, recharge your melee ability, and trigger health regen. It's, it's kind of a cool mechanic. The more solar ability kills you get, the higher your damage up to 3x. Siege Hammer creates a flaming maul that hits like an earthquake and leaves behind flame tornadoes. This is kind of cool. It basically leaves behind like a, a dot effect on the ground. Titan Striker Code of the Missile. While airborne, melee to slam into the ground like a bunker buster and gain super energy for your trouble. This is very neat looking. If you pick up ammo while you're sliding, you automatically reload your weapon and increase weapon damage for a short time. I can see this being so good in the Crucible. You're going to have Titans just sliding all over the place, reloading their weapons automatically, and getting increased damage. That's pretty good. Thunder Crash sends you hurtling great distances like a missile to hit a targeted area like a meteor strike. You're basically just a flying Titan in your super that lands and does kind of like a Titan Smash type, type of deal. Very fun. It, it sounds like it's very fast as well. So you actually move across the map very quickly. Hunters, this one is actually my favorite. Hunters, Night Stalker, Way of the Wrath. Your melee smoke bomb heavily damages and slows those in its path. Nail the perfect precision kill against a foe to vanish and gain true sight. Spectral Blades drops you into a veil of shadows to slip behind foes and stab them before they know you're even there. This is going to be the trickster setup. It sounds like it's going to be a ton of fun, but very trolly too, because you're going to have these smoke bombs that not only slow your enemies, but also cause damage, but you're also going to be able to get true sight, basically a wall hack. You're going to be able to see enemies behind walls, essentially, if you get precision kills. That's very powerful, especially in the Crucible. The Spectral Blades sounds great, uh, being able to go invisible and run around, of course, is always fun for a hunter. All right, Gunslinger's Way of a Thousand Cuts. This is a very different gunslinger. Knife trick melees fling out a fan of burning blades. In turn, 
Killing burning enemies recharges your knife trick, and burning enemies also recharge your dodge. So if you kill somebody who's burning, you get your knife trick right back. And burning enemies also recharge your dodge, so you're constantly going to be able to get your knife trick and your dodge you know, recharged. Blade Barrage doubles down on your knife skills to expel a volley of explosive kills. So no more gun, no more golden gun. You're going to have this like Blade Barrage where you're just like slinging knives all over the place. That sounds really fun. This one is the one I'm most unsure about. It doesn't sound that different, really. Hunter Arxrider Way of the Current. Slide before a melee to unleash a staff-powered uppercut, and any melee hits increase your reload speed, which sounds good. All your arc abilities re electrify your enemies, and subsequent melee strikes disorient them and refuel your abilities. Use your staff super like normal if desired, but Whirlwind Guard means that you can guard by spinning your staff, reflecting back projectiles, and tripling your staff's damage afterwards. I, I, this one, it doesn't sound that exciting compared to some of the other ones. The Whirlwind Guard sounds like it could be fun. It definitely sounds like you could do massive damage against, you know, some bosses or some yellow health bar enemies. Um, we'll have to see in the Crucible. Probably some more inventive players than me will really figure out how to make this shine in the Crucible. Next up, the Warlocks. The Warlock Voidwalker Attunement of Fission. I love this one. A new Atomic Breach Melee ability creates a void explosion at range. While holding the grenade button down creates a short range area explosion supernova. So your melee ability creates a explosion at range. If you hold down your grenade ability, you do like a short range explosion. Any explosion that you do or any time you get a void ability kill, it heals you and grants ability energy. So you're constantly ready for the next fight. This sounds like really fun. Almost like you're... You're going to be able to be like almost like a, a suicide bomber with your grenade. The Nova Warp empowers you with trans-dimensional hopping abilities, letting you repeatedly teleport short distances and then erupt in a burst of energy. This looks like it's going to be hard to defend against in the Crucible. I'm looking forward to it. Stormcaller's Attunement of Control. Tap the melee button to fling out a long-distance electricity ball that eventually detonates and flings a lightning bolt straight downward. Arc kills... Sometimes create ionic traces, a spark of raw arc energy that travels across the ground toward you, which can be collected to recharge your abilities. Chaos Reach fires a long-range blue beam of intense and focused damage dealing, which can be deactivated early to save energy. This one just sounds like it's going to be fun. You can throw electricity balls that detonate and fling lightning around. You can collect sparks to get your... your abilities back faster and shoot out this like super electric blast of beam energy really cool stuff the Dawnblade attunement of grace this is the first support class that i think we've ever seen in destiny um and it's very interesting melee attacks burn bad guys but empower allies transform your grenade by holding the button into a blessing a projectile that heals allies and drops retrievable or overshield orbs so you're going to be able to transform your grenade into a blessing, a, and then you'll be able to throw that at your allies to give them their health back and to give them overshields. It's very powerful. Well of Radiance slams your solar sword into the ground, creating a wide radius aura that rapidly heals and empowers your friends. Any ability that heals or empowers helps regen your non-super abilities. So this Well of Radiance is this sword you just like slam it down into the ground anybody standing near you is going to get both their health back rapidly and an empowerment which is very good you're going to see a lot of people running this in in uh raids and and nightfalls anytime you get to deal a lot of damage so i gotta say man these things are crazy like compared to destiny one supers destiny one supers felt amazing because it was the first time we really got to deal with supers, right? Destiny 2 supers felt like an evolution or a modification of Destiny 1 supers. It didn't feel all that new. It felt like a retuned version of Destiny 1 supers, sometimes nerfed heavily. Gunslinger, I'm looking at you. 
these feel new. They feel new and fresh. I can't wait to see how these work and how they affect the world around me. Down at Guardian Con, we'll get to play Gambit and check out some of these new supers. And I'm really looking forward to that because these sound just very powerful and fresh. And I think Destiny needs freshness right now. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of the new supers, the new subclass nodes, and uh, which one is your favorite right now, uh, sight unseen. That's going to do it for this video. Hit that like button if you like the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.